Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips Reacts. We really enjoyed the last couple of videos. So guess what? We're gonna go all over again. So let's get straight into it. Oh, this one dangers me, this one. Where have we got this video from? Uh, this is one I took when me and Colin went to Pattern Fast. What are they doing? So obviously so they're they threading. They are thread rolling. Jesus, how, how long ago was this being done? That is still getting done now. Okay. That is still being made exact. So we went there about six months ago. Yeah. And they are still doing it because it's quicker than doing it on a sliding head. It, it's quicker than doing it on any other machine. They cannot get that done any faster than how when the guy's doing it himself. Yeah. If you think you can do it faster though, try it on your machine and send it to in because I'd actually really, I could probably do that quicker. Probably not, probably not. Um, yeah, Chloe, you to... want to do that. It, it break your nails. My nails are absolutely fine. So let's go on to the next one. Shut up. So is that that a big block of metal yeah, that was on huge. the table? That, that block was huge. But this this video is. Oh is my god! How big's that head? Oh, there's nothing better than chips hitting the door. That's a big depth of cut. That. See, I could watch this all day, couldn't you? It's like that ASMR. That's, um, how wide is that? Is that like 100 mil? That what? The, the, sorry, the, the uh, face mill. The face mill, no, that was an 80, that was an 80 mil um, high feed. Oh. So, there's just nothing better than hearing chips hitting the door because you know production and you know you're making money. Yeah. But also... It's a lovely what, sound. But what you can't see in this video is the chips were coming off... Red hot. Really purple. So they got everything perfect. And what they're actually showing here is, even though it's got that, the different type of head on the machine, yeah. it can still take all that power and be absolutely fine. And absolutely fine. There you go. Why, so Swarf comes in a lot of different colours. Do you know the meanings behind the colours? Why was this one coming off purple? Um, so that book was mild steel. Okay. And so, sorry, does it vary with different types yeah. of materials? Okay. So, Mild steel and your tool steels, you want to try and get like a purpley blue colour. How do you get that with your speeds and feeds in, twi in sync with each other? Yeah, so that it, that just means that all the heat's coming out with the chip and not leaving the heat in the material. Oh, so, okay. So after you've done three or four passes, you could put your hand straight on the top of that material and it'd be cold. Uh, yeah. But then obviously don't when you're stainless... Don't do it at home. Is, don't do it Please at home. don't. But then when you're stainless, is you want your, your swarve to come off golden because that's the same again, but... but Stainless it's doesn't the turn blue. It's the different makeup of the materials, isn't it, when it's being cut? Obviously, they've got different atoms and different materials. Sorry, I'm getting a bit scientific now. But different material structures that in different heats will make it come apart and change colour. But they were, they were also showing in this video that they'd had that high feed cutter. They were doing that pass all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the end of the day... How, they, how small was that block when well, it was finished? Well, took, they took 500 mil off by the end of the day and they only used two edges on the inserts through that entire day. Really? So they were showing that if you get your speeds and feeds absolutely perfect... This is how long these... Your, your inserts yeah. will just last. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that block was... was, was Way bigger, way. <laughs> way, way bigger when it started. So I bet it went from like Z2000 right down to Z90, didn't it? That's great. Let's go on to the next one. Ah, oh, look, little love art. That's cool. Oh, wow. So what are we showing here? Different surfaces. Oh, wow. Can I have one of them? So we need to, we need to thank um, Dan from Bavaria. Okay. CNC for this because he... I don't know why he made that part. Dan, can I have this? I'd love that. It's beautiful. It just shows you the different craftsmanship, doesn't it, and what CNC machines can achieve. So I'd like to ask you, actually, Dan, how do we know how long this took? Um, I can ask two? him. I can yeah. ask him. I can find out. Yeah. But and how I many tools he used? And it's great that he, he got both sides. Yeah. So I, I would Did have liked to have it? seen the soft jaws he used to hold it. For yeah, the second that's time. A good. And I suppose he had to make them on the machine as well. That's really nice. Thanks for sending that in, Dan. I appreciate that. Should we go into the next one? Oh, I love these. I know exactly what's going to happen. Is it one? One notch? Let's have a look. So, this is the use of tabs, isn't it? Yes. So, why do we use this method to get out a part like that? 
because then he's that part is finished. As soon as he knocks finished, it out, done. that part is finished. He he done that was on a Matsura five axis. Yeah. And he'd done both sides. The part was complete. He knocked it out. And then all he did, he had a bit of um, just like a emery bit of cloth. Emery, yeah. He emeryed the tabs off. That part was ready to go. And That's they were fantastic. just doing production after production on them parts. I suppose you could do that on a... No, you can't. I was going to say you could do it on a three axis, but you can't because obviously you've got a tilt in each which way. But because you're going into the material, say that's your material there, right? That's the block. If you're flipping it, you can get right in there, can't you? You know what I mean? On the flat side yeah, yeah. and then just knock it out. And the thing is as well, they did it that way because they weren't wasting any material. So what the material you can see around the outside, yeah. if you'd have done that on a three axis, you would have Got, milled all that away. You'd have to blast that away, yeah. Well, they were actually cutting that into four and using the, the outside to make little pieces. So they were using, so not a lot of scrap, scrap material left. They're utilising it, saving money. Great. Um, considering we're using the tab method, this wouldn't work on a, on a thick part, would it? Or would it? Does it? Is there any specifications on why you'd use this tab method? I don't think so. I just think the high, um, I think it comes down to how you hold it. Okay. So if you're doing a really thick part, you may, as you get to the end of the cycle, you may have to put something in to keep it strength. Yeah. To keep yeah. the middle strong while you tab around the outside. Because it could warp. Yeah, or you could, or if you tab one side and then that side starts to go to the other side, it could scrap it. So mm. usually you see people tabbing a lot in aluminium, but you do see people tabbing on three axis as well, just because they can, they'll do the part, turn it over, and you've only got to deal with the, the part. You've bit. not got all the excess yeah, material. Yeah. But it's depends on your system as well. So a lot of CAD cam systems actually have a, tab a tabbing. Feature. Yeah. But for you to do that, if you were programming programming that by hand... you just have to lift up in Z a little bit and go yeah, down. Yeah, it'd be a lot harder to... Pro you'd have to program by hand. It'd be a lot harder to program yeah, by hand. Yeah, and so. where, I suppose, in a CAD CAM, it would probably put the tabs in the most structural place so you wouldn't have it on a radius because that's got no strength at all. You'd have it on a flat edge where it can go. So that's it for this week's Swarf and Chips Reacts. If you have any videos, please send them in to the links below and I'll see you next time.